Hey, it's Hannah. I'm a writer, and before I started publishing my own books, I used to publish poems and short stories and things like anthologies and journals. If you're looking to publish shorts and either haven't done it yet or you're having trouble getting started, this video is for you. If you're interested in writing, editing, publishing, reading books, go ahead and subscribe because we talk about those topics every Thursday on this channel. And if you'd like to see more content specifically about publishing shorts, leave this video a like and a comment so that I know to make more. I also had a video idea where I would show you guys the entire process of getting a short story traditionally published. So going through my writer's bio to update it, showing how to filter for different calls, sending out submission batches, everything related to publishing short. So if you'd like to see that as a video, go ahead and let me know because that would be pretty labor intensive. So I do want to make sure that there's an interest for it before I make it. I'll make it if I get 30 requests for it in the comments. That feels like enough data. <laughs> okay, so here are 12 tips for getting your first short story published. Tip one is to get your story in good shape. So make sure you had other people read it over and that it's as polished as you can make it. Clean grammar, good formatting, as presentable as possible. None of these other tips are gonna help you if the story is bad and none of the tips are gonna help you if your presentation is messy. A lot of times getting something published in a lit journal can be a little bit like sending out a resume. The resumes that have typos and unattractive formatting are gonna be the first ones to get tossed. The applicant or writer might look like they're messy or don't have good attention to detail or they're less eloquent and even if those things might not necessarily be true for the person or if the story's really good, you are still hurting your chances if you're not submitting a clean and crisp manuscript. Tip two is to read and follow all of the instructions that the publisher gives you for submission and for formatting. There are some standard things that you'll see in submission calls but everyone might be a little bit different and they do have reasons for asking for the things that they ask for because every publication is going to have a different like review process and use different programs. So even if the formatting requests or the file type they ask for seems a little weird, they have a reason for asking for that. So having worked as an editor on a couple of publications, I can tell you that easily half of the submissions get tossed if they're not following those guidelines just because it's a major inconvenience and there are so many submissions anyway. So to make sure that your story is getting a fair shot, just make sure that you're following the submission rules. Tip three is to look for niche publications. So this is something I talk about a lot on this channel, but whenever you're starting out, it's much easier if you can find a submission call that only a few people can submit to. So minority publications, high school, undergrad magazines, if you're still in school, uh, regional contests and things like that, where there is a smaller pool of people submitting pieces, obviously your chances for publication are gonna be much higher. Tip four is considering a really small goal when you're starting out. So having previous publications in your bio can help you to get more publications because it gives you a little more validity and people might pay more attention to your story if you have previous publications, which isn't necessarily fair, but nothing is. So if your goal is to get published, these are some shortcuts that you could take. So you might start with just like a super tiny, technically a publication route, just to have that listed pub. For example, there are Twitter accounts like Micro Flashfic that post like three stories a day. So their barriers to entry are pretty small. They need a lot of stories and they're really short stories. So it'd be easy for you to get a few of those out. And then you can list that in your bio. So if you get just like a teeny tiny publication, and then as soon as you get another one, you can replace it. But having something listed in your bio, just makes you look a lot cooler. <laughs> Tip five is to submit a lot. <laughs> if you send one story to one publisher and wait for a response, you're not going to make a lot of headway. For one thing, it can take months for you to hear back. One time it took almost two years for me to hear back about a story that at that point I'd already self-published and they accepted it. And I was like, I've already self-published this. Sorry. <laughs> and what sucks is that the ones with the longest wait times are often the most prestigious and impressive ones to be published with. So you kind of have to prioritize between having a lot of publications to beef up your portfolio or having some of those bigger names that you have to wait around for a long time to get. And also there's no guarantee that you'll get them. So maybe that's six months of submission time down the drain because you're waiting to hear back from this one person. My balance for that was if I had a piece that I thought really slapped and I wanted to get it in front of as many readers as possible, I would send that out to one of those those bigger publishers that doesn't allow simultaneous submissions while I still had a bunch of other stories that I was sending out to a lot of people. So I was okay leaving those pieces I was particularly fond of in that review process for a few months because I was publishing other things in the meantime. Another reason you might wanna submit in big batches is because you will get a lot of rejections. <laughs> no matter how good of a writer you are, how amazing your story is, publishers often have a very specific idea of what they'd like to publish and they have a lot of options so they can be as choosy as they'd like. Have multiple pots on the stove. It was like under a year in the time that I got most of my publications 
and I was sending out an absurd number of submissions. I think my goal was like 30 a week. So I would set those kind of submission goals if you want to get a lot of publications under your belt. And don't be shy. No one is looking at how many places you've submitted things and no one knows how many times something got rejected before it was accepted. That's your business. Tip six is to track those submissions. If you are sending out mass batches like I just recommended and you don't pull the submissions of that story once it's been accepted somewhere, those other publishers might get mad at you. Before I had a system for it, I had a story that I sent out to a couple of people that got accepted in one place and I was like, sick, awesome. Forgot about the other places. And then another publisher accepted it. And when I said I'd already published it, they weren't happy you usually get blacklisted if you do something like that because for them to drag a story through their entire review process and then not be able to publish it is a massive pain in the ass. So make sure you're staying on top of your stories and where you've sent them so that you can pull them immediately if it gets accepted somewhere else. Tip seven is to use submittable.com. Submittable lets you keep all of your pieces in one place and you have like a status on all of them. So if something gets accepted, you can pull everything else back really easily. And it makes it easy to filter for different calls, like those niche topics I mentioned earlier. If any of you are regulars at submitting shorts and you have a better site for this, uh, let me know in a comment. I'll be sure to add those to the description if you guys have good recommendations. Tip eight is to use rejections as your success metric. I think this is really fun. If you're tracking accepted pieces, it's just not a very compelling game. You can make a little fill tracker to keep on your desk and race to finish it or like put a quarter in a jar every rejection to buy yourself a treat. If I'm remembering correctly, I've only had like two or three pieces accepted on their first try. The rest were between two and 20. I know writers that have had amazing stories get rejected more times than that. It's just based on what the publisher is looking for. It's not necessarily a reflection on you or your story. You will get so many rejections, so you have to make it fun or you might cry. Tip nine is to write a strong bio. Most publishers will ask for you to submit an author bio along with your piece. So try to make it compelling. This is another opportunity to like add a glance over, impress the publisher. A lot of publishers ask for the writer's bio just so they can include it if they accept your piece, but it can also be something that helps you get to the next round of reviews. Imagine you're an editor receiving a thousand submissions and you have to narrow it down to five by the end of the week. You're probably going to look for the ones that didn't follow those submission guidelines and chuck 300 of them. Then you might look at sloppy bios with no former publications, nothing interesting, a couple of typos, and you toss out 200 based on that. Now you're down to 500 for free. You didn't even have to read the pieces. A lot of the time, that's how it goes. As a writer, you're gonna want to be as appealing as possible from an overview glance because that's your first test. If you don't get past that test, your story might not get a chance. So make sure that you're putting effort into your formatting and your writer's bio and following those submission guidelines because most publications are so competitive that they look for heuristics like that to narrow down what they have to read. Tip 10 is to keep a running portfolio of your publications when and where they were published. If you stick with it, your publications will probably stack up way quicker than you're imagining and it's really easy to lose track of them. I can't tell you everywhere I was published. I might remember five of them because they sent me the physical copies. So don't do what I did. Keep your portfolio updated because that information could be helpful later on. And after you get your next publication, you can replace your older one in your writer's bio. So just keep like the most up-to-date, most impressive publications listed in your bio. Publishing tends to kind of snowball. You get the little ones and because you got that little one, someone's like, oh, well, they've been publish. Let me look at this more thoroughly or push them onto the next round. And then you just, you grow from there. It snowballs. That said, do not eat shit. If you're submitting in mass waves, you might end up with an acceptance from a publisher that you don't really want. I'm not saying to harshly scrutinize everywhere that you're sending things to when you're first starting out, because like I said, you're going to get mostly rejections, but you should take a closer look at it after you've been accepted. One time I rejected an acceptance because I looked at their site and the other pieces they were publishing and I didn't want to be represented next to that kind of content. Another time I got a response from a publisher that said they wanted one of my poems, but they wanted to make these certain changes to it and their edits were super dumb. So I emailed them detailing how and why they were dumb because that is my affliction. And they were like, oh yeah, you're right. No, we'll leave it the same. And I was like, no, y'all are stupid. <laughs> and I published the poem somewhere else. You pretty much only get one shot at traditionally publishing a piece because most places will not take a pre-publish. Another thing that might make you not accept an acceptance is if you don't agree with the contract. So some places want to keep your story forever and the rights never revert back to the writer. Some places it's like, 
a two year or an amount of time after they publish it that you're allowed to do something else with it. So just read the contract and make sure that you're okay with everything you're agreeing to. Typically your only option for publishing something after you've traditionally published it is to self publish it. And that's actually a great way to double dip. And it's what I did with Little Birds because I as a publisher don't mind to pre-publish. I've got a Skillshare class all about how to publish your own collection. If you're into that, it's linked in the description. But if you don't plan to ever self publish, you can pretty much only use that story somewhere once. So make sure that you're happy with where it goes. And tip 12, consider self-publishing. Not only is traditionally publishing a piece incredibly competitive, but you could get rejected for reasons completely outside of your control that have nothing to do with your story just because publishers have an idea of what they want. So you could write an amazing story that never gets a shot because it's too far outside of the realm of what these established organizations are looking for. Self-publishing is a step around for that and you make a lot more money. Like I mentioned, I have a Skillshare class all about it that's linked in the description. You can grab a two week free trial. And yeah, that's all I got for you today. I hope that this was helpful. If you end up with a publication because of these tips, come back and link me. I wanna read it. Also, let me know if you'd be interested in that video where I go through the entire process of traditionally publishing a short. Thank you for watching and thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video. You can find my books and my classes and my Patreon and everything else linked in the description. Go ahead and take a peek if you wanna support me or my content or the channel. And I'll see you next week, bye. Mm -hmm.